So that's adla. But when shaitan is described figuratively as he took this, he took Adam and Hawa salamun alayhima, and he yanked them out like a bucket is pulled up out of a well using deception. But Allah uses the word dalla, meaning he took his sweet time. Like a boy pulling, being pulled out of the well would take a few minutes too. But shaitan took a lot longer than that to pull them out of Jannah. In other words, he didn't just go there and say, hey, that fruit? Oh, just do it. Just do it, come on. And that was it. And then our parents were like, okay, sounds like a good idea. Like, no, 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 no. He did waswasa. He came to them. He came to them. First time they caught it. Uh, billahi then he came again. Then he came again. Then he came again. Then he came, again, then he came at night. Then he came in the morning. They said, hey, you hungry? You hungry? Hey, so I know this one tree. I imagine shit. Uh, uh, Jannah has countless trees. Countless trees. Jannah is way bigger than this earth. Allah says, أعرضوها السماوات والأرض its, skies is the, its, its size is the skies and the earth combined. Then he says, عَرْضُهَا كَعَرْضِ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Its size is maybe somewhat comparable to the skies and the earth, meaning it's even bigger than the skies and the earth. It's even bigger than that. So how many trees in Jannah? And Allah calls it Jannah, which means every bit of it is covered with green or trees. So the entire span of more than what we know of the constantly expanding universe is covered with trees. So how easy is it to find one haram tree? <laughs> you mean, think about that. Of all the trees in the entire universe of Jannah, there is one that is haram, and shaitan had to first of all GPS them back to that one tree. Wow. Little by little, no, take this turn, why don't you go over here? Why don't you go over and check that out, check, that, check the strawberries, those look pretty good, don't they? And he did, so he didn't call them to the haram necessarily. Dalla suggests, he called them to something. Now, are all the other trees haram? No. All the other trees are not haram. But he's not even directly saying, go to that tree. He's saying, go to this one. Now go to that mountain. Check out this waterfall. Then go over here. Then go over here. And they're going and they think this has nothing to do with what? A larger plan. They don't see it, that this is part of a larger plan. And Allah is teaching us that's exactly what shaitan does. So what does he do with you? He tempts you into doing something. And when you do it, at first, it's not haram. It's not totally haram. At least I'm not doing, and then you can fill in the blank with your creativity. Because when kids get caught, they say, at least I didn't, and then they, you know, right? But he only wanted to get you to the first milestone. Because from there, he will work on you for a month or two to get you to the second milestone. And then to the third milestone. And then to the fourth milestone. Eventually, you will be doing the very thing you said early on, at least I'm not doing. You'll be doing that. But he won't get to you immediately. He will work on you. Slowly. He'll work on you slowly. He'll work, uh, he'll, he'll work on a guy and a girl to develop an Ill, you know, illegitimate relationship slowly. First they'll just see each other in the bazaar. <laughs> At the Islamic book stall. <coughs> oh, you like that tafsir too? I love that tafsir. <laughs> yep. Yep. I love him in Kathir. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Oh, you love that surah too? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, it's the last copy or I'll let you buy it? It's okay, please, please. It's innocent, it's nothing. It's okay, alhamdulillah. He said, salamu alaikum. He said, alaikum salam. He, he, he. He, did, he did a little bit. It was all innocent at first. And then it takes a little bit. Hey, uh, do you know Abdul Karim? <laughs> well, yes I do, Abdul Karim. <laughs> you know? Oh, okay, I know him too. And that's, Somebody comes and says, hey, you can't say, do you know Abdul Karim? I look, oh, is it haram? I can't even ask who Abdul Karim is. Is it haram to talk to a brother at all? No, I can't tell you that it's haram. But you know what shaitan's doing? Just a little. Then a little. So are you on Facebook? Well, of course I am. Actually, I already looked you up. You know. <laughs> you know. Little by little. And then, you, then you'll say, but I, we're just texting. We don't do anything else. We're just on WhatsApp together. That's all. It was just a picture. It wasn't a video, it was just a picture. It'll be one justification, then another justification. Then it's just a dinner. It's with the whole MSA. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. How did he know that? Who told him? <laughs> one thing to another, to another, to another. Then I get the phone call. Brother Naman, do you have a couple of minutes? I want to talk to you. What's her name, bro? 
Get well, you know, the shaitan, Allahumma bi ghurur, he got, he got us. Now I really want to marry her, but I'm 14 years old and... <laughs> it's happened. It's happened. <laughs> you know. He will get you, look. Boys like girls, there's no hiding it, they do. And shaitan knows that better than you. He does. And you know what? You know what else? The way, you know how people like to dress provocatively now? Like if I go to Target or Walmart or any other store to even buy my kids some, some clothes, I can't find decent clothes anymore for my girls. They're like nine, 10, you know, eight years, seven years old. I can't go to the store and buy any decent clothes. I have to go to the boys section to find sweatpants for them. <laughs> Mothers here know what I'm talking about because they, they make horrible clothes. Like, like I, I can't even say it on stage kinds of clothes for kids now because they're trying to sexualize children. They're trying to do this, right?